God's in control. Uh, the juries? No. no juries. God's in control, right? Yep. He, and I will say it over and over again. God, everybody take your phones and make sure they're on vibrate and silent.
Intro one four one four one four one four tag if you need it. Watch for cutoffs at cable points. The mics are live now. Everything we say is on live stream. Thank you. 
As we prepare to recognize our graduates, let us first go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we know that you are the architect of every galaxy, yet the watcher of every sparrow. In the words of the psalmist, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. As I look around today, stand in awe of your provision for this institution, its faculty and staff, and every single one of our students most especially at this time, these graduates. Lord, I take great solace in the declarations of your word that you created our innermost being, that you knit us together in our mother's womb. Most assuredly, we can stand amazed that not a single day has gone by in our lives that comes as a surprise to you. Father, I thank you for these graduates. I thank you that you brought them here to CBC. I thank you for the time commitment, the toil uh, that led them to this landmark moment in their lives. Lord, I ask that you might bless them and their families as they eagerly, or perhaps even hesitantly, look toward the next chapter in their lives. Would you arm them and equip them with the fruits of the Spirit? Would you etch on their hearts the greatest commandments of all, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves? Would you offer them today the comforting reminder that just as their last years came as no surprise to you, neither will the ones to come. I pray your blessings upon them, and may they seek to bring glory to you in all that they say and think and do. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I met Miss Judy Gabbard 35 years ago when I walked into her class as a student. Having been out of high school for over a decade, I had some really unique challenges. You understand. I would not say she made it easy. In fact, at times I thought at the very least she made it tolerable. But I was here to learn. And it didn't take me long to realize that she was here to teach. She loved teaching. And she had an unrelenting passion for the scriptures. Giving a devotional before every class and sharing her heart about what God had impressed upon her in her early morning readings. Uh, she is a morning person, by the way an early morning person. There are those in, on this stage that have worked with her uh, longer than I have, but no president has labored side by side as many years as I have with Judy Gabbard. And what I found is that in addition to her gift of teaching, she has a spiritual gift of encouragement. I'm guessing I have nearly 100 cards, and I do, I guess I'm getting old, I save every card, nearly 100 probably in the past 18 years, where she's written scriptures of encouragement and love and prayers and scriptures always a piece of candy. I 
I present to you this morning a friend, co-worker, teacher, Miss Judy Gafford. Thank you, Brother Perry. Graduates, family, and friends of graduates, faculty, and staff, welcome to CBC's 2002 graduation. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you. If I break out into a biology lecture, please forgive me. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, this is an exciting time for everyone, uh, for graduates having received, having achieved a goal, and faculty for having seen their investment pay off. As I grew up, I lived on a dairy farm, uh, learned what hard labor is, my children don't like for me to tell those stories because if they were complaining about what I asked them to do, they'd go, please don't talk about the shovel and manure anymore. <laughs> uh, and about how early you had to get up to do that. But I learned a lot of valuable lessons. And one of them that I learned is that if you don't check the oil in your equipment, you could be in for some nasty surprises. You have to perform maintenance on the equipment. I learned that if your lawnmower or your tractor runs out of oil, it's a costly, uh, it's a costly mistake. You must check the oil. I know that my dad said oil is much cheaper than machinery. So let's put the oil in. So when you're embarking on a new path in life, it's wise to check with a master planner. We need to align our goals with his perfect will for our life. And it's better starting than starting down the wrong path. We need to make sure we align with his goals. We don't want to have to backtrack because it can be very costly. It can be costly financially as well as in time and insanity. It's important to pray and listen as we make decisions for the next step. Now, I'm saying you need to listen to him, but you cannot hear him if you do not know him. You cannot hear him if Jesus Christ is not your personal savior. John chapter one talks about his being the shepherd and he says, my sheep hear my voice. If you don't belong to him, you can't hear him. I can tell you that I had a wonderful Christian mother. She took us to church, but the most important thing that my mother did was she lived her faith. My dad was a World War II veteran. He dropped out of an airplane behind enemy lines. He slept in a foxhole. He was among the soldiers that walked into cities, taking them for our cause. He was wounded in battle. He came home forever changed. Mom said he wasn't the same person. He had PTSD. I remember that he slept with a loaded German Luger under his pillow. He was not an easy person to live with. He was moody. Sometimes he didn't speak to my mom for months. But how did she react? He was always loving and smiling. Put her hands on his face and looked at him and said, I love you, Jack. Her joy came from God, not from circumstances. I heard her pray and I tried to pray, but I never felt like I was being heard. I made a profession of faith and was baptized and became a member of church when I was nine. But I have to tell you, I had no real peace and I certainly didn't feel God heard me when I prayed. It became an all-consuming desire to be able to hear God and have peace. I just didn't feel like God was listening. One night, I said, this has got to stop. I've got to uh, get this resolved. So flat on my face by my bed, I begged God to help me see why I couldn't hear him. And he did. He let me know that I'd never received Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I said, Jesus, I'm the worst of sinners. I don't deserve forgiveness. But I realized that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and I accept him as my savior. I don't know 
what you'll ever do with me. Because you see, I don't have any talents. I can't play the piano or any other instrument to help others worship you. I, I'm not sweet. I'm not outgoing. I'm a very quiet person. I can't speak in front of other people. I can't sing. Now, you say, oh, yes, you know, believe me, if your grandmother says you can't sing, you can't sing. <laughs> I should know because I'm a grandmother and a great grandmother and they can do no wrong. So if your grandmother says you can't sing, you can't sing. So I was being honest with God. I can't sing. I said, I don't know what you'll ever do with me, but I'm yours. Do with me as you want. Peace descended. I'd done nothing. God had given me eternal life. Now I realized I needed to listen to him. I could hear him. So how do you hear him? I watched those around me who were Christians. I watched my mom. <clears throat> but I realized pretty quickly that maintenance, as a, maintenance is important to a gasoline engine. It's also important in our spiritual lives. Taking time each day to read the Bible, pray, and listen to God is a key element in avoiding a costly breakdown. Just like we need oil and the engines to make them so that they won't have a breakdown, we need Jesus in our lives and daily prayer and Bible study so that we don't have a breakdown in our spiritual life. In Psalm 5, it says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct it to you. Make it your aim to know the word. Then when facing life's challenges, you can be ready for any situation. A friend of mine said, uh, I'd like for you to go to this Bible study. It's unique. So I did. It was different from any I'd ever been to. We were given sheets and uh, they had questions and we were to read scripture every day. Uh, we were encouraged to write down what that scripture verse was saying to us, to think about it. We were to look at what it tells us about God. We were to look at what it's saying personally to us. Is it telling us to do something or to stop doing something? We were encouraged to have a daily conversation with God. Set a daily time to meet with him. A time to be alone with him, not in a church service one-on-one -on -one with no one else around, not even an animal. Spend time with him. You'll never get to know anyone unless you spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. When others are around, you're concerned about them. You need to spend one-on-one -on -one time to get to know God. That's the only way you'll be able to develop your spiritual senses. Just like a baby needs to develop its senses for being able to focus, being able to grasp things, being able to walk. As a baby Christian, you develop your spiritual senses. You need to spend time with God talking to him to help you develop your spiritual senses. He becomes a real part of your life, moment by moment. I can't imagine a second without being able to have a conversation with Jesus. What do people do that don't have that? I can't even imagine. It's not magic, it's maintenance. When we ask the Lord to fill our hearts with his presence on, our load of, on the road of life. Once he's your personal friend and constant companion, you can hear what he has to say. He will make you uncomfortable with the decision. He will make you comfortable with the decision. You might walk into a room and be uncomfortable, walk out. You might walk into a room and feel extremely comfortable. That's a safe place. You might meet a person and be uncomfortable. Don't spend a lot of time around that person. You might meet a person and it feels like somebody that you've known all your life. You have a lot in common with them. And that's the person that he wants you to spend time with. He gives you peace about the path you're taking and makes uh, helps you to walk on in your life. With God as your navigator, you're headed in the right direction. 
now that you know him, now that you're listening to him, you must do what he asks you to do. In James, we're told, in chapter 1, we're told to be doers, not just hearers of the word. I'm not going to tell you it's always easy to do what he asks you to do. He may ask you to do what you think is impossible, but he's promised to help us if we do what he asks. He's asked me to do what terrified me most, speak publicly. I was the child in elementary school who wanted to sit at the front, but I sat over to the side because every time I answered a question, the answer was wrong. So for my whole school life, I spent it on the fringes. I was afraid. When I finished college, Dr. Harold Cooper came by my house and asked me to teach at CBC. I was terrified. I can't do that. This is what God wanted me to do. And so I'm here. He will equip you to do what he wants you to do. It was almost 54 years ago. I can tell you I still need God every time I stand before my class. Without him, I could do nothing. I know without a shadow of a doubt, this is what he wanted me to do. <clears throat> you must listen to him and you must do what he asks of you if you wish to be successful in life. Education opens doors. Step through them as God directs. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm praying you will accept him. Accept his sacrifice on the cross for your sins. If he is your Savior, I pray you'll spend time with him, getting to know him as your personal companion and friend. I also pray that you will listen to him and do what he asks you to do. As you continue with your life, remember to check the oil. <laughs> That was great, Judy. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name's Steve Elder. I'm the division chair for non-traditional programs here at CBC. And part of that responsibility includes being the department chair of PACE. And so I'm honored to present this award for the greatest contribution. So the PACE Greatest Contribution Award recognizes a student who has the greatest positive impact on CBC during his or her tenure in this non-traditional program. This person has enriched lives of her fellow students and the faculty that has guided her through her studies. This year's recipient is receiving a Bachelor of Business Administration. The student currently works in HR at Centennial Bank, where she will be receiving a promotion very, very soon and she hopes to continue her education to receive a human resource certification. Upon graduation, the student plans to begin volunteering for a program that offered her assistance with her studies. Instructors have said a lot of great things about this student. One, she sets a high bar of excellence in the class always responsive, probably one of the very first students to ever post an assignment or a discussion thread. Very reliable student who is gonna represent PACE and CBC extremely well. I'm pleased to, pleased to honor and present the 2022 Greatest Contribution Award to Ms. Janet Worthington. now ready for the conferral of degrees, so will the candidates for the Associate of Arts, the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Business Administration please stand. President Kimbrough, 
These candidates have met the requirements as set forth by the Faculty Council and the Board of Trustees to participate in today's graduation ceremony. It gives me great pleasure to present them to you for the conferral of their degrees. Well, I get to hand you something today of great value. It's something I hope that you will display proudly, spend a little money, get it framed. I pray it's something that you will put to good use and that your time here has been beneficial and helped define you and grow you, not just intellectually, but socially. And of course, as you've heard, spiritually as well. We do hope it's been a transformational experience. It's just the beginning of learning, even though you're non-traditional students. Because every time I learn something, what I learn most is how much I do not know. And it ignites a fire in me to learn more. And I pray that that is true for you. Congratulations by the authority vested in me by the Central Baptist College Board of Trustees. I confer on you the degrees you have earned with all the rights and privileges that accompany them. Chief Marshal, present the candidates. Ellen Lynn Hotchkiss Bonet. Jill Bingham McCollum, summa cum laude. Bobby Allen Jeffers, cum laude. <laughs> Abigail Leanne Sutherland, magna cum laude. Jana Megan Warbington, summa cum laude. <laughs> Vanetta Lynn Bloom, magna cum laude. Crystal Dawn Tucker, magna cum laude. <laughs> Deshay Ebony Kennedy. Janice Robinson Cohen's magna cum laude. <laughs> For health reasons, the final candidate is unable to attend, but his family is in attendance here today and would like to support uh, his accomplishment, so I'm going to call his name now. Christopher Cortez Smith.
Candidates, please move your tassel from the light to the left side of your cap, signifying to all that you're now a graduate of Central Baptist College. Congratulations. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his
Our Father, we approach your throne of grace at a time of great thanksgiving. We are thankful for this occasion. We are thankful for all of these who have assembled here today to express thanksgiving to graduates and family and friends and faculty and staff and administration for all that has occurred to bring us to this place to give praise and thanksgiving to you as well and most of all. We are thankful for this place. We are thankful for the people who have invested in it through the years. We are thankful for this faculty, for these staff members, for this administration. We are most thankful for these students who are graduating today. And we are thankful for every friend and family member who has encouraged them, every coworker who has given them a kind and encouraging word along their journey. And we are thankful that you have brought them to this place. And we pray their lives are changed because of Central Baptist College and that as they leave this place, they will remember it with fondness and that they will pour themselves back into this place in numerous ways. We are most thankful for Jesus Christ. We are thankful for Professor Gabbard reminding us of him and his sacrifice and all that he can provide for us in life. And we are thankful for her and our commitment to this institution for so long a period of time. And we pray, Father, that as we leave this place, that our hearts, our minds, and our spirits will be continually giving you praise for Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, and it is in his name we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you.